Hello, everybody, and thank you for coming to another story time. It is snowing outside today, and I am super excited. You can see it's nice and snowy out the window behind me. Um, I love snow. I love winter, and I am absolutely stoked that it is snowing. But it's a little too cold and snowy to read story time outside. So I'm sitting in front of my big window in hopes that you can see my bird feeders out here. And I will grab my big camera and get you a good view of what's happening outside my window. And you can see that now. So I wanted to read in front of my bird feeders today because our story today is going to be about birds. There's something very special happening this time of year. It's the 123rd annual Christmas bird count. So the bird count is run by the Audubon Society. And each year around Christmas time, so in December and sometimes even into January, depending on where you live, um, people all across North America, from Canada, even all the way down to Antarctica, are counting birds in their yards and in their communities. So you can contact your local leader, and I'll post a link um, in the resources this week that have that has a map with where your closest bird count would be, and then contact information for that leader. If you wanted to contact your leader and figure out how to get involved maybe this year or even next year. Um, here where I live in Tremplo, our count is going on this weekend. And there's two different ways you might get involved with the Christmas bird count. One is by going on a specific route where you walk and you record any bird you see or hear. The other way that you might participate is the way I'm participating this weekend where I just get to sit at my house and look out this window. And I'm going to record birds at my feeder all day on Sunday. So this, ooh, this little junk goes ooh, right on my porch. Ooh, more junk goes. Um, distracted by birds, forgot what I was saying. Oh, this way that I'm participating by just counting birds at my feeder is the exact same way I participate in another citizen science program called Project Feeder Watch, which I love. And I just record the birds that I see at my feeders and there's directions on how to do that on their website. And then scientists all over the world who are studying birds and populations and migrations can use the data that I submit as a citizen scientist, which is super exciting, in their research. So I love citizen science programs. These are two great programs to get involved with over the winter um, for birds. And birding in winter is a great time to begin if you've never done birding before because we have a lot less bird species here in the winter. So it's much easier to get to know some of our birds when there's very few of them around. And they readily come to your feeders right outside your window for a nice meal during the winter. So I'll put more information in our resources down below on birding in winter and how to get involved in either feeder watch or the Christmas bird count. Um, but for today, in honor of it being the Christmas bird count weekend, we are going to read a story called, imagine that, Bird Count. And it was written by Susan Edwards Richmond. Hopefully the glare out of our big window isn't too bright for our story. It was illustrated by Stephanie Beiser Coleman. Ooh. Does anybody know what this bird is? We'll see if this bird's in our story. Hold your guess in your head. Bird count. Ooh, we see lots of birds. How many birds do you know on these pages? Let's find out who they are. I shake mom in the dark. Wake up, sleepyhead. It's bird count day. One Sunday each winter, we take part in a bird census called the Christmas bird count. On this day, we go out and count every bird we see or hear. Mom says helping with the bird count makes us citizen scientists. Citizen scientists are ordinary people who do real science research. We aren't the only ones either. Today, from the far north of Canada all the way down to Antarctica, people are counting birds. Bundle up, Ava, Mom says. It's cold outside. I find my fuzzy hat and my warmest coat I'm glad we're not birding in Antarctica. Hmm, she has another good birding tool in her hand. Do any of you have binoculars? Knock, knock. 
It's Big Al. He's our team leader. There are 10 teams in our count circle. Each team counts the birds in one area. Our team follows the same route every year. Fields, woods, wetlands, neighborhoods, even the center of town. You never know where you'll find birds. Hey Ava, says Big Al, what are the rules again? He knows I know them, but he tests me every time. Count every bird you see or hear, I tell him. Make sure at least two people see or hear it, and don't count any birds twice. The last one is hard, but we do our best. Did you bring the scientists' most important tools? Asked Big Al. Mom's got our binoculars. I've got the field guide, and Big Al has a notebook and a pencil. But that's not what he means. Our eyes and ears, I say. That's right, says Big Al. It's still dark when we back out of our driveway. I roll down my window and hear an owl. <gasps> Who's awake? Me too, it calls. We can't see it, but we all hear it. So it counts. Why don't you take the tally today, Ava? Big Al hands me the notebook. I look at mom and smile. This is my first time. I write great horned owl at the top of the page and make a single mark. Chickadee dee dee, a chickadee calls good morning. I add it to the list. I'm going to be busy today. Oh. Did you see both of our birds? So we have the chickadee down here and just the bottom of our great horned owl up in the tree. So they said they didn't see it, but they could hear it, and that counts. Ooh, ooh, is this? As the sun comes up, a V of birds flies overhead. Long necks, slow wing beats. Canada geese flying over. I make four up and down slash marks and one across for a bundle of five. Some of you have probably used tally marks before. And that's how they're recording how many birds. Then you don't have to erase it and write a new number each time, right? That's the way to tally, says Big Al. I'm keeping an eye out for a big black bird called a raven. I saw one two years ago, but not last year. Big Al says ravens are rare around here. I hope we'll see mine again today. Let's check out this field, says Big Al, shooing us from the truck. It's freezing, but birds don't mind. Eight small birds dip and glide, dip and glide right at us, then veer away. Hmm, do you know these birds? Goldfinches aren't gold in winter, so the color won't help us, but we know them by the way they fly. One bundle of five and three straight marks. Bundle of five and three makes eight. A bigger bird jumps to the top of a bush. I lose sight of it for a moment. Then it flaps away in a flash of gray and white. <gasps> Mockingbird markings. But Mom and Al missed it, so it doesn't count. You'll have to excuse my dog. He also really likes looking out the window for birds, though I I think he's actually watching the squirrels more than he's watching the birds. So he might be in and out. Nothing flying right now, Big Al observes. We scan the trees looking for familiar shapes. Tallest oak, Mom whispers. Two o'clock. Big Al and I read the tree like a big clock face with noon at the top and six at the bottom. There it is. A big bird of prey with its feathers fluffed up. Its back is brown. It's belly white, one red-tailed hawk. Let's find its mate, Al says. He and Mom search the other trees, but I stick with the same tree, sure that the other hawk is there. I check the tree again. Six o'clock, I say, close to the trunk. Good eye, Ava, Big Al says. Can you see the other one hiding there too? Let me see if they updated their list. As we drive to our next stop, I watch the sky out the window. A blackbird soars above us. 
its wings tilt up in a wide flap v it can't be my raven that's the way a vulture flies i look hard and see two more higher up and making wobbly circles cool mom says turkey vultures three hatch marks so they see three birds put three tallies next to them on their list At Weatherby Street, we park and walk down to the marsh. Loud quacks come from the cattails. We get closer. We see some ducks dipping their heads under the water looking for food. Splash! Three other ducks dive out of sight. The dabblers are the mallards. Bottoms sticking up. So we call these kinds of ducks that just put their heads under to look for food, we call them dabblers. The divers are mergansers. I tally them in our notebook. So the mergansers dive and go totally underneath the water. There's one other bird here too. Everything's quiet for a while. Then we spot a quiver in the tall reeds. A hungry great blue heron stretches its long neck on the lookout for a tasty fish. My stomach growls. Scientists get hungry too. Let's see the updated list. As we head to lunch, we see a line of cars stopped ahead. Big Al stamps on the brake. I crane my head out the window to look. A flock of wild turkeys block the street between Crosby's Gas and Bagel Bin. We count. It's a big number, so I write 17 on the tally page and circle it. While we wait for the traffic to start moving again, we count starlings in the trees. I count 11. Mom gets 12. But Al counts 13. Hmm, what would you do then if you all count different numbers? I take the average of the three and circle the number 12. So you can see these bigger numbers that would take a long time to tally mark. They write out the number and circle it. Stomach's full, we drive through several neighborhoods. We're looking for feeders where birds gather. Stop, I say. There's one with cardinals, blue jays, juncos. Wait, and isn't that a brown creeper on the tree? Its feathers look just like the bark. You're getting good at this, says Big Al. I see a squirrel and chipmunk too, but they don't count. Not for a bird count. So right now outside of my window, I also have blue jays at my feeders. I have cardinals. I also have a squirrel, a very large squirrel, who eats a lot out of my feeders. I have a lot of dark-eyed juncos. They live under my porch in the winter and then come out and eat from the feeders during the day and spend winter under my porch at night. And brown creepers, it's pretty camouflaged. I've had a few times, but I don't have them very often. So I get Ava's excitement when she sees something she might not see very often. Whoosh! A hawk with a striped tail dives at the feeder. The small birds scatter. They came to eat seeds, but the largest bird came to eat them. That's one Cooper's hawk for us. This has also happened at my feeder. A Cooper's hawk sometimes comes and eats my juncos, and it's all part of nature. It's pretty cool to watch. All the birds have to eat, right? Even the, one that's, even the ones that eat other birds. A big blackbird wasn't scared away. It hops across the yard. <gasps> Is that my raven? Caw! Caw! No. A crow, not a raven. Ravens make a croaking sound. I point it out to Mom and Big Al. Every bird counts. On Horseshoe Lane, houses hide deep in the woods. Someone reported seeing an oven bird here last week. Big Al says that oven birds usually fly south to Central America before now. As scientists, we need to investigate. We make a fishing sound to bring out the oven bird. Fish, fish, fish. We don't see an oven bird, but we do hear a downy woodpecker's rat-a-tat-tat -tat on a trunk. 
Several little chickadees cock their heads at us. We're miles from our last chickadee, so these go on the list too. So remember, they're trying to make sure they don't count one bird more than one time. But since they're really far away from the other chickadee, they're going to count these ones. Fsh, fsh. Still no oven bird. We hear a sound like a cat's meow. Then we see it, a gray bird with a flicking tail. It's a cat bird. So let's see. Yeah, they saw a downy woodpecker. They saw, looks like, five chickadees. And up here in the tippy top is their cat bird. Their list is getting pretty long. Back on the road, I see movement in cucurbit farms fields. Geese in the corn stalks. Count them, says Big Al. One, two, three, four, five. Uh-oh, says Mom. That's the same number as our flying flock. They probably landed here. No hatch marks this time. We already tallied these geese. Big Al points to a gray and white bird. Look, Ava, he says. There's your mockingbird. This time it counts. So remember Ava saw a mockingbird, but Big Al and her mom didn't see it, so they couldn't count it. Now Big Al and her mom and Ava see it, so they get to count it. As the sun sets, we pull into my school parking lot. Behind rows of buses are trees full of birds. They're like cutout shapes against the sky, but we can hear them. Cedar waxwings chittering, morning doves coo Robin singing cheerio, cheerio, cheerio. I see a big black bird flap to the ground. Looks like a crow, but rock, rock, it cries. That's it, I shout. My raven came back. The um, raven, it can look like a crow, but they heard it and know that that's not the sound the crow makes. Too dark now to bird but not too dark for a party. Potluck, hot chocolate, and firelight. We meet other teams in our count circle and share what we saw. Big Al gives our tally to the circle chief. She reports for all 10 teams. I love being a citizen scientist. Maybe someday I will go to Antarctica on a bird count. I wonder what birds I'll find there. So this is really common after a community bird count. Um, sometimes it changes uh, it, it definitely changed with COVID and some places are going back to how it used to be and some haven't just yet. But it's really common for all the birders in a count area to gather afterwards and be able to celebrate the birds and get together with friends. A lot of times um, people do these counts with the same group of people year after year after year. So it becomes like a community of friends and family and that's really fun to get together afterwards. Says more about species in the bird count. So it tells you a little bit more about all of these species that were in our book. So hopefully you recognized or learned some new birds from our story. Um, I'm not going to read through all of this, but in our resources for this week, I am going to put in a couple um, different websites and apps that I like to use that will help you learn more about specific birds or learn who I, how to identify specific birds. And then I'll also put in a link to the Christmas bird count map. So if you wanted to find your local bird count and contact your local leader about how to get involved, you can. And then again, this is an activity that you can do all winter long with your family counting birds in the yard. Thanks for coming to Storytime. Have a great holiday and we'll see you again soon for another story. Bye-bye.